The material derivative is a very useful concept because it captures the conceptual leap between thinking of blobs of fluid moving around and thinking in terms of velocity fields, pressure fields, etc. Now like many concepts, um, it's very, very simple, but it can take a while to truly understand it. Um, so it just helps by looking at lots of examples. Um, here's an example. You know the river around the mill, um, and you know there are lots of cows, and they do their cow things uh, around here. And you can imagine that if you've got the wind coming in that direction, uh, you get some sort of uh, smell field, shall we call it, uh, which might look something like this. Within this region, it might be quite high. Uh, perhaps this region, it's even higher, the smell. But then, as you get further away, it gets less and less smelly. So let's just be a bit more formal about it. Let's define some axes, call that the x-axis, call that the y-axis, and say we've got some smell field. Uh, for the sake of argument, let's call it P as a function of X and Y, and P denotes the smell. Now let's say that you get into your punt, and you start upstream, and you just let the punt drift with the flow in the river downstream. So let's say you trace out this path until you go underneath the bridge by Queens. And let's draw uh, on the right here, the smell that you experience as a function of time. So on the vertical axis we're going to have the smell. Uh, and I'm going to call that P as well, but note there's a difference here. This is the P if you like following you, or the smell that you smell, whereas this is subtly different. It's the same thing, but it's a field. It's a function of X and Y. So the first thing is the smell following you, and the second thing uh, is the smell field. Now you start off, when you start off at point A, uh, there's very little smell. When you finish at point B, again, there's very little smell, sometime later. And in the meantime, you've passed by point C, where there's a maximum smell. So the smell that you experience will look something like that, where we've got point A here, point C in the middle, and point B at the end. So the question I want to know is what is the rate of change of smell? So what is dp dt, which is that gradient there, following u? So let me write that down at the bottom. What we're after is dp by dt, where that p is following u. And we want to try and get it in terms of the P field and the velocity, uh, your velocity as you move through this field. Now let's look first of all at the uh, gradient of the smell field. Um, gradients, obviously, they go perpendicular to the constant lines and they always point towards the area of the strongest or the highest smell in this case. And the gradient there is grad P. Now, which way are you moving? You're moving in that direction there, and you're moving at some velocity v, which is a vector. And the angle between these two vectors, because grad p is a vector and v is a vector, the angle between them is theta. And so the rate at which p is increasing to you as you move through this field is equal to the modulus of your velocity multiplied by the modulus of grad p, the rate at which is increasing, multiplied by cos of theta, which is the angle between those two vectors. Now, of course, that can just be written as v vector dotted with grad p, which is also a vector. So we can move that straight down here to say that dp by dt following u is equal to v dotted with grad p. Now, this p here is obviously a field. Uh, it's not the pressure, sorry, it's not the smell following you, it's p as a function of x and y that we have up at the top here. Now the velocity as well actually is defined all the way along this streamline 
that you're on as you drift in your punt, and it too is defined as a field, Vx of y. So that is also a field. So we've managed to express the change in smell following u here on the left in terms of the velocity field and the pressure field, which is exactly what we wanted to do. Now, as a further point, if the wind was changing, say, and the, the smell field was changing with time, we need to add on here, at the point that we're sitting at here, um, we need to add on the change in the smell with the change in time at that point, so with x and y constant. And that's to give us the complete expression. Now, I've just scrolled down the page, and I'll write that uh, a little bit more neatly and in black. We have that dp by dt uh, following u is equal to, now moving this term over to the left, dp by dt at x and y constant, so it's the rate at which the smell changes with time at that point in space, plus this term we just wrote down, v dotted with grad p. Now let us take the p outside. You'll notice that this p here and this p here is the same thing. It's the field p. So we can take it outside. And we, what we get there is a d by dt plus v dot grad all of p. Now you'll notice that I've separated the grad p into two parts there. I'll come back to why that's OK later on. But just to continue this, this term in the brackets here has a special notation. It's just simply d by dt, big D, and it again is acting on p. And this is the material derivative. Um, just to write the left-hand side down again, just to highlight what we've done, the two things are actually exactly the same thing, except that this is the smell following u, and this p here is the smell field. So it shows how we get from a field, an expression for the field p, to an expression following a blob or following u. Now, why is this useful? Well, it's useful because this concept, the material derivative, can be applied to anything, not just to smells. Um, for example, if you wanted to look at the temperature, the change in temperature t, following a fluid particle, um, and you had the temperature field, it's quite simply exactly the same thing as dt, big D, t by dt, where this is the temperature field, um, and this here is the temperature of a blob of fluid. Now, when it's really useful is when you're looking at accelerations. Um, if we're looking at the, acceler the acceleration of a fluid blob, we'd want to look at the change in velocity with the change in time. And by this notation, it's exactly the same as the material derivative of the velocity with respect to time. And this we can write out at as dv by dt at a point in space plus v dotted grad in brackets with the velocity field. We find that particularly useful when deriving Euler's equation, which is f equals ma for an inviscid fluid. So there we have all the important information about the material derivative. I want to consider briefly uh, the question of what this means. Um, the way that I've just derived this, we had the velocity dotted with the pressure gr or the smell gradient, grad p. Now it's quite legitimate to write this as v dot grad brackets acting on p. Um, if you expand this out in, say, Cartesian coordinates, you'll find it's exactly the same as that. Uh, there is, however, an advantage in the second way of looking at it, because what we have here is a scalar operator. Now, it's a fancy word for basically something that acts on something else. d by dt is a scalar operator. It acts on whatever comes after it, um, and itself is a scalar. So if this is a scalar, it gives you another scalar. If this, on the other hand, is a vector, it gives you a vector. Um, this scalar operator looks like this. Uh, v dot grad, let's expand it out in co Cartesian coordinates. Um, 
vx, vy, vz dotted with d by dx, d by dy, d by dz. Uh, you can see that because we've got a scalar product in the middle here, this just gives you a scalar vx, d by dx, plus vy, d by dy, plus etc. Um, and it acts on whatever is after it as well, and if this thing is a scalar, it gives you a scalar. If this thing is a vector, it gives you a vector. So, for example, if we scroll back up now and look at this issue of taking the material derivative of the velocity here, uh, what we see at the end is that we have a scalar operator v dot grad acting on a vector. So that whole thing will give you a vector, and it's absolutely legitimate to do that. Um, as a final point, though, uh, just to add, this is for the uh, those who are really interested. Uh, v dot grad of v could be written as v dot grad of v, which begs the question, what is this? Um, grad is a vector operator, and it's acting straight away on a vector. This gives you a matrix with nine terms in it, and this matrix describes the deformation of a fluid, um, well, a fluid blob of any shape, uh, but if you start off with something square, it gives you an idea of the rotation, it gives you an idea of how much it expands, uh, and it gives you an idea of the shear that you get of that blob by looking at the diagonals in the case of expansion, the um, and these are the other six terms there to give you an idea of the shear and of the rotation. But that's well beyond the scope of this course.